What are you going to do? What does what, that even what, mean? What are you gonna I hope not. Do we have to answer that one? <laughs> <laughs> My cheeks are sore. <laughs>
hundred plus. You know, again, we don't really recommend going into low, you know, three to four hundred square meter blocks mm. if you can if you can avoid it, especially in southeast Queensland, guys. We, remember, we're talking about up up here. Yeah, but like being within five minutes five minutes of the beach, what that's really like limiting you to the Gold Coast or Sunshine Coast, essentially, or five minutes from the beach in Brisbane is really five minutes from the bay. <laughs> So I guess after reading through all the all the answers to that question, right, it's a very commonality between all these questions, right, is that they're giving very specific answers as opposed to trying to understand what the what the actual question or the situation is, right? Unless you understand someone's p specific needs and requirements for their own individual circumstances, like not all this stuff is really going to match up to that person, right? So mm -hmm. if someone, for example, something above 4.5% yields, right? If someone's really got a lot of, already a lot of cash flow in their portfolio and they need more capital growth, you're not gonna maybe be looking for something above 4.5% yield. You may be looking for something at 3.5 to 4% yield with more capital growth potential. Do you know what I mean? Especially oh, yeah. if that's lacking within the portfolio. Mm. So these are all very good generic reasons, especially for this last comment. But, you know, again, that's a, a, for, for, for an investor that we don't really know a situation about and what specifically they need. I think what everyone's doing is trying to answer as best they can, but the question itself is what's dodgy. I think what everyone's really asking with a lot of this stuff is that they're just trying to find the golden bullet answer, and there's no golden bullet, there's no silver bullet, there's no just like one size fits all answer to everyone's investment question. It comes down to their specific circumstances and really what they're looking to achieve in the yeah. long term as well as the short term and what they currently can achieve within their portfolio and, and individual circumstances. For anyone out there that when they write these questions up, stop looking for the silver bullet because there's, there's, there's really no one secret source of data that we look at. There's no one thing <laughs> that just solves everyone's, everyone's problems. It comes down to having a look at what you require at that specific time within your portfolio, whether you're at the start at the end or in the middle. Next one, probably more of a mortgage breaking question this one, but we can answer it. And always remember guys, this isn't financial advice. <laughs> will interest rates Will interest rates drop next year or climb even further to 10%? <laughs> further. Further. Shall I lock in a fixed rate now or wait? Not sure what to do. Expert one. Oh, be good. 12 interest rate hikes next year to take the cash rate to 8.35%. Shit, I hope not. <laughs> next. Destroy the whole country. Whoa. Whoa. Hand, hand grenade cannonball. Whoa, ball. we're moving to Bali. We'll get a new RBA governor then as well. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. This is a big one. I've fixed straight away every time and never and never went wrong. What I could have gained if interest rates did drop would have been eaten by the variable rate during the interim anyway. I only regret was not fixing my home loan for three or four years at three to three and a half percent when rates were two percent. Yeah, we all wish that. <laughs> Everyone out there who, does, who didn't do it wishes they had done that. Uh, what's my opinion on fixing straight away always? Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, so would you fix in a falling interest rate environment? No. <laughs> Like, if it was way under what the current rate was, well, can you imagine? But it's never going to. Well, I, I guess the question is if we just if we just roll back to when the interest rates were higher before COVID at at you know five percent, you would have been really unhappy if you fixed it at five percent and then it was at, like went down to pretty much two percent, wouldn't you? What I'm saying when, when it was two percent. Why didn't they just let us lock it in for the entirety of the loan? Because we're not the US. <laughs> Because <laughs> we're, because we, because we, we don't want to cause an economic crisis like the US did. All right. Expert number three on this question: It will be another raise. Tax cuts will be highly stimulatory and will raise inflation. So they're raising interest rates to cut taxes to then raise inflation again. Do we have to answer that one? Yeah, that, yeah, that. that yeah. <laughs> all right. Do we have to? Here's another one. Isn't there an election next year? Maybe they will drop just in time for voters to vote. Well, it's funny that because we have just passed legislation that the Treasurer cannot actually change the cash rate over the governor of the RBA because they have had that power in the past. They haven't enacted it, but now the Labor government have just changed it. So the Treasurer cannot do that. So no, they can't do that in an election year. Oh, so anyways, I would fix, then you know what you can afford for the next couple of years. That's also not a bad response there. But I guess, let, let, let's give an answer to this, I guess, from our perspective, is that we've seen interest rates climb at the fastest rate that they have in a very long time. 
we've seen inflation slow and come down mm. over the last 12 months. It may, it may have come back again. We've seen in the United States that it started to come back down as well. So what we're seeing here is not the catalyst for increases or major increases. And a lot of, a lot of the economists and major economists are predicting cuts either in late 2024, 20, early 25. Mm. So again, this is a very much a financially driven question. And again, we don't have a crystal ball here, unfortunately. Yeah. But my gut feeling is that we are either pretty much at the peak, if not at the very peak, and then we'll be looking down the other side of the mountain moving forward. And I'm kind of thinking we'll peak at about six, seven months, and then look at coming down. So almost same, just slightly different time timelines. In, oh, you reckon in it's going to you reckon it's going to keep climbing next year? Oh, we'll have to. Yeah. Yeah. You, re- you reckon it's going to keep climbing? I mean, and that does show. Like, like Luke and I, I read a lot of the same data, and we still have different a differing opinion on this topic, right? So I guess that shows just there is a vagueness to the future. There really is. Yeah. Um, you know, we read the same stuff, we go along the same stuff. If everyone's got different opinions, even economists do. Yeah. You know, different banks and stuff. So yeah, it's it's impossible to pick. But you know, you can make educated opinions yeah. on it. That's yeah. right. And I guess the, edu- the educated opinion is that we're pretty close <laughs> to the top, if, if not pretty close. That wraps it up, man. That's been, a, that's been a lot of fun for, I guess, our first Q&A. My and cheeks are sore. <laughs> <laughs> and I guess the takeaway for you guys is that if you want to get really, really bad advice, yeah, definitely, definitely go on the advice of uh, all these experts online, leaving their own personal comments on either Reddit or Facebook. But there's a much better place to start, and that's really jumping on a phone call with either myself or Luke. The link to our discovery call is below, and we would be happy to jump on a phone call and actually answer these questions. If you want some serious advice, some serious advice, free advice, um, jump on the phone, pick it up, and give us a call. So I guess a reoccurring theme in these questions and answers is everyone's trying to jump to give an answer, but instead of understanding the actual situation better. And, and I guess that's what you really need to be doing if you're serious about investing your hard earned money and lots of it into some property. And the best thing is to give us a phone call. We'll chat with you, we'll pick up the phone and you can ask any questions that you want all together and we'll get to understand your situation.